255 here. Peace, Deep Minds. What's going on? Today we're talking about the backstory to Nia Replicant from Dragon Guard 3. A website called CBR.com had an article called How Nia Connects to the Dragon Guard series. So that following backstory is going to come from Nia. And then we're going to go a little bit into the Nia series. Or just the beginning of the story, look at the characters in the world, just to kind of give you some some idea of where the background setting comes from of the story and a little bit about the world so that as you play near replicant 1.2 to the rest of the numbers, you can enjoy it when it comes out next Friday on the 23rd. All right, the backstory to near replicant. So, there's a character in the Drakengard series by the name of Zero. Zero was this young girl who was sold off into child prostitution. She was thin. Um, she tried to escape. Ended up killing everyone at the brothel. Was subjected to horrible torture. And then later on, she runs into this flower. And that's kind of where this story begins. Zero is an intoner. One of the six others that can control magic through song. Many years ago, the intoners defeated many warlords that were ravaging the countryside and became revered as deities by the people. Zero discovered that the source of her and her sister's power was an evil flower, and that is its ultimate goal, the destruction of humanity. So she set out to kill her sisters and stop this plan from reaching fruition. By the end of Drakengard 3, she completes a mission and destroys all of the intoners, including herself. Of course, things are never that easy, and one of the intoners had created a clone of herself. That clone would survive and go on to have children that would share the powers of the intoners. These children would create a cult known as the Watchers. The story of Drakengard begins generations later when a hero named Kaim fights against the Watchers who have figured out a way to end the world as they seek the seeds of destruction. These seeds can be put together to create a portal to another dimension and summon an evil being to destroy humanity. Each seed is stored inside one of the various kingdoms and the Watchers powerful empire has conquered all but one, the one kind fights for. Though Kind fights valiantly with his dragons, companions help, the Watchers acquire all of the seeds and open the portal. Drakengard has a few different endings, and one sees a gigantic demonic being come through the portal. Kaim uses the seeds to open another portal and fights the creature through it. Both Kaim and his dragon end up trapped in a dimension they end up destroying the creature in, 2003 Tokyo. Tokyo's government sees Kaim and the dragon as a threat and kills them with their air force. Their death spread their magical essence across the land, resulting in a devastating disease for the humans who live there. Alright, let's talk about Near Replicant. Near Replicant version 1.22474487139 is an updated version of Near Replicant, previously only released in Japan. The game takes place in the year 2005. Replicant has the prologue take place in 2005 and a 1,412 year time skip to the main game. Alright, so let's answer some questions. Is Near Replicant a sequel? Near Replicant is a sequel, as we answered in the beginning, to one of the Dragon Guard's many endings. The protagonist is a kind young man living in a remote village. In order to save his sister Yona, who fell terminally ill to the Black Scroll, thank Drakengard ending. He gets killed in Oak Tokyo, the essence is spread, so that's probably what we're gonna guess the Black Scroll is based on what happened in Drakengard 3, right? So the protagonist is a kind young man living in a remote village in order to save his sister Yona, who fell terminally ill to the Black Scroll. He sets out with Grimmore Weiss, a strange talking tome, to search for the sealed verses. The world of Near Replicant starts in the village Northern Plains. 
The village Northern Plains is a peaceful village where the protagonist lives with his younger sister, Yona. Despite its small size, it has a bar, shop, and library, everything you might need in daily life. Vast plains stretch out to the north where wild animals like boar make their home. The next area that we know about in the world of Near Replicant is the facade slash barren temple. A city of max people. There are countless rules which the people must live in accordance with. Wolves roam the nearby desert. Beyond the frequent sandstorms, there lies a temple that the people of Facade are forbidden from entering. Alright, let's talk about the different characters now. The protagonist of this story has a calm expression that conceals a darkness underneath. But he cares deeply for his only blood relative, Yona. The protagonist sets out to find a cure for his sister's illness, but because he puts his sister above even himself, he tends to speak and behave recklessly. Yona, a young girl who loves her brother dearly and admirably, tries her best in all things. She's been sickly since birth and falls ill to the Black Scroll. Those around her tend to be drawn into her magnetic personality. Kain, a fierce warrior whose left half of her body is possessed by a shade. As she was harassed for being intersex, and in order to prevent further possession by the shade who is weak against sunlight, Kain chews clothing that exposes her skin. Despite her looks, her vocabulary and attitude are brash and violent. She is crude and eats a lot. She wields dual swords and eviscerates any shades that get in her way. Emil. A boy who lives with his butler in a manner, he is gentle and calm, but has a mysterious power that turns everyone he sees into stone. Emil is guilt-ridden by this power and wishes to be able to one day see the world with his own eyes without turning those around him into stone. He senses a special friendship with the protagonist, who accepts Emil and his special powers. However, he is a bit dense at times when it comes to other people's feelings. Devola and Popola, I might be butchering that, twin sisters who live in the protagonist's village. They are close confidants of the protagonist and his sister. Popola is the head librarian of the village library and is reserved and calm. She speaks politely and is kind, but she has a strong sense of self. Her sister Devola is very animated and loves to sing. She can often be found near the fountain in the village singing. King of Facade. A young king who governs over Facade, a land that honors the law. He is a gentle king who loves his people and is greatly pained by the water shortages and shade attacks. However, despite the rules being all important to the people of Facade, the king may have broken more of them than anyone else. Fyra. A young woman who lives in Facade, a land that honors the law. She was sent to Facade as a servant when she was very young, and the rules forbid her from speaking. Fira is kind to everyone, and while she's quiet and reserved, she possesses an underlying strength. Due to her innate kindness, and because she was once helped by kind, Fira is friendly to the protagonists and company who are bewildered upon entering Facade. All right, with that, you should have gotten a nice, good intro into the game. I hope you're as excited to play Near Replicant as I am. If you haven't played Near Autonoma, don't. <laughs> play this game first and then go play Near uh, Autonoma afterwards since it takes place. And in the links below, I have the uh, information you need to learn about Drakengard. I'll also post a link for the article. 